Tov Chavri, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. We saw the tweet come out this evening here. Uh, this is a Ukrainian news re uh, going on right now uh, or over a little bit earlier this evening in Ukraine. The Ukraine military is saying that there is an agreement, a signed agreement with NATO already to deploy NATO warship into the Sea of Azov. That's not a good situation at all, guys. Uh, we actually tried to report on this earlier tonight on Israeli News Live on our live broadcast for YouTube. Uh, our broadcast originally went out okay, but we had had an open mic. We tried to reload it, and for some reason, uh, YouTube's live feed cut our feed uh, in the first two minutes of it, talking about this very event right here and that is uh, NATO warships going to the Sea of Azov. You want to talk about beating the Russian bear, uh, that's not just poking the Russian bear with a stick, that's outright taking a stick and beating him as hard as you can uh, just to really agitate uh, Russia. It's not going to be a good situation. I'm afraid it's really the provocations are going to majorly intensify as if they're not already tense in the situation uh, right there uh, near Vladivostok, Russia, uh, uh, the Sea of Japan, where there's being reported by RT that a destroyer has entered into the area there, first time since 1987. An American destroyer, it's the USS Mech Campbell, that has actually entered into the sea right there, uh, 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 the sea near Russian area. It says US Navy sends ships to Russia's Far East, reportedly prepares to enter the Black Sea. <laughs> which of course is headed toward the Sea of Azov. We know the last time this happened, that was during the Crimean crisis, uh, in which President Putin states in the, uh, the documentary Crimea The Way Home that he was ready to activate nuclear warheads in the event that NATO were to dare challenge Crimea. Well, you know, the other day, guys, we were reporting from... Uh, 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 Lorenzo, our Italian friend there that is reporting about the situation in Ukraine, uh, we share with you on one broadcast where he sp spoke about the S-300s on the move in Odessa, uh, but then yesterday we spoke about uh, another action there that uh, Lorenzo had brought out, and that was the, the movement of the seven T-64 Russian tanks to Maripol that uh, Lorenzo had reported on his own broadcast there. And of course, uh, it is being alleged that these could be used to actually stage a provocation. They're unmarked. A provocation to blame it on who? Possibly Russia, po possibly the uh, Donetsk, Luhansk uh, region there, which is called by the Ukrainian government the Breakaway Republic. Nonetheless, in any direction that we're looking at, the tensions for a war with Russia is ever increasing. We know that the Navy Seabees is already uh, uh, building a military base in Ukraine. We know there are talks about building one in Poland. And of course, now we have uh, the USS uh, McCampbell there in the <clears throat> near the uh, uh, the Far East there. Excuse me. Uh, Sends Russia to, far, to Russia's far east, which is there by the Vladiv Vladivostok port, which is called the Peter the Great Bay. But of course, that could be in relation to the U.S. Marine Corps uh, refueler that went down. There was an F-16 incident there, not being much spoken about in the news about this so as of right now. Seven sailors or seven pilots are missing uh, uh, from this plane. One of those have been recovered, but six are still missing. And that's being reported by RT. Not to mention, the Haaretz is also reporting that as Trump gives Russia a 60-day ultimatum to comply with the nuclear arms control of 1987, that Russia has deploy deployed a, uh, a laser weapon that they claim is aimed at U.S. troops. And if that doesn't make matters worse, we're also having more intense uh, bombing by the U.S.-led coalition in Syria near Deir Azor. Once again, the disputed territory, uh, Syria trying to regain the east of the Euphrates. You know, Syria has talked about more recently about taking, about the, taking back the Golan Heights there that they lost back uh, in, in the war with Syria when, when President Bashar al-Assad's father was in power. Uh, but now Bashar al-Assad is fighting just to get back about a third of his country that the United States is holding captive. 
talk about stealing natural resources. That's becoming a norm, and it seems to be that not only the United States, but other nations are also getting more and more in the act of that, like in the case of Venezuela. Right now, the U.S. and Israel both, and we've had information being told to us that there are uh, special force units on the ground in Venezuela as they work to overthrow that nation with CIA and Mossad agents in there. Well, I can kind of tell you some stories about that uh, that I'm sure the U.S. government would rather you not know about. But it just seems to go that, well, ever since Kennedy and even before Kennedy, we've been involved in all those types of actions around the globe. Overthrowing nations, taking their natural resources. And now that we see the Silk Road is coming uh, in, in the days as we reported yesterday, United States, Canada, all being out of the, uh, left out of this Silk Road initiative, at least as far as the images show where the Silk Road goes, cannot help but wonder, is it a war with Russia? Or is it something else that's coming? I know a lot of people are saying now there's no such thing, Planet X not coming, nothing's going to happen. Well, I don't really know. Maybe, maybe not. I can guarantee you one thing, though we keep things up the way we're going now, beating up the Russian bear, you won't even need a Planet X to come. Just a nuclear war itself will decimate our, our country, the whole northern hemisphere, and maybe that's why we will not see a Silk Road in this part of the world, but instead uh, the elite will be moving to those uh, wonderful Chinese cities made with some Chinese drywall that will cause cancer for some more people, as well as those in Africa. By the way, I'm supposed to remember I was told to say nice things about the Chinese. Well, the Chinese people are good people. I am all for the Chinese people, but definitely against a communistic government because, as we know, the Bolsheviks uh, helped uh, use that communistic government that crushed the Russian uh, people back during the Soviet Union days and, of course, uh, did away with the Tsars. But you know what? There's going to be a resurgent. There is a Russian Orthodox prophecy that this last Tsar will come after the Great War and will drive out Romanism from Russia. God bless him. I'll be glad to see the day when that comes. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. This time, YouTube won't have a whole lot of choice but to publish it. And as I said, we'll say it once again because they cut off the first part of the video. NATO has made the decision to introduce warships into the Sea of Azov. That is a provocation against Russia like none I've ever seen. Are we going back to the days of the coup of Ukraine and Crimea, the CIA-backed coup? We'll have to wait and see. Very, very tense, very troubling. I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget to support the broadcast. We need your help. Uh, and keeping this broadcast on the air. So IsraeliNewsLive.org is our website. You can go there. You can donate as well at the bottom of the screen, just below the screen here. You can see our address. You can support uh, by, uh, by mail. And soon we'll be adding to the website where you can do direct deposit right into the account. We'll add that information in the very near future. Uh, hopefully we can get that going so you guys can, for those of you that prefer to do direct deposit, we'll have that that information available for you as well. Also, Candy, uh, Canby Grove, I used to think it was Candy Grove, Canby Grove uh, in Oregon. Uh, I think I have the website up here somewhere, at least I thought I did. Uh, uh, it's actually, it's easy to remember. The, the website is www. Uh, what is it, Lions? Lions uh, of... Whoop, I got it wrong. Lions of the... Whoop, nope, I know, I've still got it wrong. Oh my gosh, uh, that was sent to me by uh, Bonnie Harvey that's hosting this um, for the conference that we got going on there. Oh, I know what I can do. I can just pop it open here. I'll find it in my history here where we had that open earlier. At least I thought I did. Uh, soldiers of the Lion. There we go. Soldiersofthelion.com. Uh, we have our uh, conference with L.A. Marzulli on January 18th through the 20th, 2019. That's next month. We got about 44 days to go. Uh, gives you a little bit of uh, preview here on the front page of the site. Gives you the ad address, Candy Grove Christian Center at 7501 South Knights Bridge Road, Canby, Oregon, 97103. 
Uh, there are 10 RV spots available. You'll be able to register uh, to, to find out more information. Uh, you can just go to the top of the page. There's also uh, cabins available. If you go to the registration section, uh, you can see the, the cost because there's meals that are provided. Uh, it's really designed to where when you come to this conference here, you can stay at the conference. Uh, there's weekend passes. All kinds of things that are being set up there. There's cabins, there's bunkhouse, uh, uh, there, of course, the Riverfront Lodge where we're holding the event. Um, I don't know exactly what all is what in there. You just kind of have to click on that, take a look at everything, see what's available, what works for you, your budget, uh, for those of you that want to come there. I understand also there are hotels that are not too far from uh, the event there in Canby Grove. So, uh, whichever is easier for you and I think yeah, if you just click on it like say for example the bunkhouse it shows you the bunkhouses there uh, you can put on there you know as far as how many for each part there that you do this I haven't really looked at all that but those of you that want to attend we'd certainly love to see you there uh, uh, LA Marzulli will open it up Friday night and then uh, we'll be speaking, me and my wife, Saturday and Sunday, as well as L.A. Marzulli on Saturday and Sunday as well, too. Anyway, we hope to see you there. Uh, I'm expecting a, a, a very fascinating time at this conference, and you can see everything about it there on the website. Again, the, the website's name is Soldier, uh, Soldiers, plural, of the lion.com. I'm Stephen Benu with Israeli News Live. And again, don't forget, support the work we do, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Erev Tov.